So there, so there's a halacha here, which you might be familiar with, okay? It's more the men who go to shul at night have the halacha about, you know, they see what goes on about lighting in the Beit Knesset. And, but we do have this minag, okay? We have a minag of lighting in the shul. A minag of lighting in the shul, right? And we do it every night. There are many shuls around the world that do it where, when else? In the morning at Shachris. It's, it's nice as well to do it in the uh, in the morning. Okay. And no, night in the shul, in the shul. I'm talking about in the shul now. They light in the shul, you know, many shuls do. It's not, it's not a thing. It's not a din at all. What? Yeah, yeah, many, many do that. Okay, many do that. So, yeah, good question. Why? So we're talking about tonight, right now, we're talking about lighting in the daytime, in the shul. Okay, what? Not nighttime, so not day, daytime. In the nighttime, lighting in the shul. <laughs> and the question, of course, is why? So we do make a bracha in shul and night when we light. And... We don't do it under any condition. There's certain conditions when we do it, when we don't do, and what the criteria is. And then, yeah, and even the person who lights, okay, even the person who lights in the shul, okay, he lights again with brachos again at home, okay? And it's mentioned a few times in the Shulchan Aruch, the Beit Knesset, Menicho Bekota Darom, okay? You light it in the Kotel Darom, okay? Of course, well, anyone want to guess why we do it in the southern wall in the Beit Knesset? Anyone want to guess why? Like the Beit Amigdash. In the Beit Amigdash, you go in to the, uh, let's see, coming from the Kotel Maravi. Okay, and then, so you go on the other side, you can be by the Holy of Holies. I know there's another structure there, which should be speedily removed in our days, Mir Hashem. And so, right, that structure, the golden dome of the rock, so that is over the rock, is the Kodesh Kadash of the Holy of Holies. If you go further east from there, so then you're going into the Kodesh, the Holies, the Holy, not the Holy of Holies, the Holy. And in there you have Three different objects. What are the three objects? Menorah. Menorah. The incense table. The katoras. The and the shulchan. So you have the shulchan is on the northern side of the kodesh. Uh, in the in the middle you have the a little over to the left. Going to Moshitas, you have the mizbeach. Not the mizbeach, the korbanot. Mizbeach the katoras. The, where the sense was, was, and then south is the menorah. Okay, so to commemorate that, that's the place where we put the menorah in the uh, shul. So that's the first time it's mentioned in the Shulchan Aruch, and then it's mentioned again. Okay, then it's mentioned again that we have the mitzvah to light in the shul. Okay, and why? Why do we go ahead and light in the shul? Anyone know why? Why are we lighting again in the shul? Anyone want to guess? To publicize the miracle. Okay, we want to publicize the miracle. And we do it, each one of us, at home. Why do we do it again in the shul? Why do we do it again in the shul? Ah, so a few reasons are brought down. A few reasons are brought down. Okay. So some want to say that we do it in the shul because maybe someone never doesn't have a home and there's no lighting. Okay, and because there's no lighting for that person, so then what? So at least you have something, right? Others say we want to have, Pishumani said, they're Robin. Not just each one of us lights by our window, but we really have Robin. Robin is in the shul. Because it can put it outside because of persecution. Ah, so some say that as well. So there's different reasons brought down regarding the history of lighting in the shul. And there's some fascinating halachas, as we mentioned. Okay, as we mentioned, the uh, 
it doesn't fulfill one's personal chiyav. He still has to light again at home. Okay. And, but it's a very big mitzvah. And we do it. Now, we only do when there's a minion. We do when there's a minion. Okay. So listen to this. Listen to this. Big, big, big chiddush. Okay. So we only light when there's a minion. Now, who makes up this minion? Men. That's what we do in halacha. In halacha, men make up the minion. There are some post game that want to say that who could be included. Let's say you're starting Marv at nine and it's running late. So Bahu, you have to wait for the minion of 10 men. But candle lighting, you have a couple of women there in the show. Let's say the other day we had the Eggert, Kohn, Hadas dinner. Families, they use the shul for a celebration. Baruch Hashem, the family's out growing the shul. It's wonderful. And uh, so they had the annual celebration. And we came in from Arv and they were just finishing up and leaving. So let's say at 9 o'clock, Shimon Cohen. Baruch Hashem will be watching him light in the Migdash from here for Yamenu. And that was a weak amen. I say so myself. Thank you. So... Maybe you don't know Shimon Cohen. Shimon Cohen's our senior Cohen in, in our shul. And, uh, you know, he's the Cohen from day one. Uh, when uh, all the little kids in the shul were growing up, he would do the Shabbos services for them out after shul. A great, great guy. Now he's a Baruch Hashem, wonderful Saba with all his grandchildren. And Vietz Hashem, he'll be uh, in the Migdash soon doing the Avodah. And thank you. And there he is right after the party. He's ready to make the Bracha. Now, wait a second. You still had a couple of ladies exiting. The men were coming in. So you had seven men and three women. So is that, is that enough? You hear the question? You'll say, what, what do you mean? And halacha, a minion, is made up of 10 men. And this is not Orthodox Judaism. Danny Myers, don't start, the, you know, veering off the path over here. What's going on? So... Have the women, the women make they... up 10. What I said, you have the three women, seven plus three, exactly. Yeah. So, does that work? So, guess what? So, Edie says, Wait a second, they're obligated in the mitzvah, just like a man is. If a man is away now, with all the war going on, God's on these holy chayalim away. So, technically, if the wife, okay, um, she can line in the house. And she and he fulfills the obligation. Ne'er ishu beso, and she lights for him. So that's fine. Okay, that's fine. Um, another place. I'm trying to find all the places referenced in the shulchan. Yesh mishom ne'er shal beis kneses, the shal shabbos shulchan akulam shal mitzvah muta lahad bekzem mizeh. Okay, it just gets another place. I'm trying to show different places that it's mentioned in the shulchan. The ne'er shal beis kneses. Anyway, so how would a woman join a minion here? That's just not Orthodox Judaism. Right? And I'll give you two more examples where the post can discuss it. Another place to discuss it is by uh, Chris Megillah, making up a minion. And I say, what do you mean? Who needs, you don't need a minion for Megillah reading? Do you need a minion? No. You can read for someone in their own home. Avi Littman, Rabbi Littman, who reads in Nashul, will go to a woman's house and light afterwards, right? And so I read afterwards. He'll read afterwards for one woman and she'll make the bracha. Well, he'll make the bracha for whatever they do. So what's going on? You don't need a minion. You need a minion to do what? On Purim? I'd like a, 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 in Kriyas Megillah? What? For Megillah, you need it. You know, for what? Not for the Suda itself. For Suda, you don't need a minion. Right? You don't need for a bracha after after Megillah reading. Anyone know what bracha we say after Megillah reading? There's a bracha that we say after Megillah reading. It's a whole beautiful bracha. And that bracha is said according to most poskim only when you have what? Only when you have a minion. Okay. So if you only do when you have a minion, so some poskim want to say that guess what? 
from the winner could join in and make up the minion. Another halacha in Megillah, she is chayev. Depend for, uh, for Hanukkah. Paris, the woman is Mufayusa, many right. Okay, so she could be, if there's seven men, she could be part of the Good. Day, right? But why in Megillah? She's Chayef in Megillah. The woman has Chayef in Megillah. The woman has to hear the Megillah, right? Mm -hmm. Doesn't she have a Chayef Megillah reading? <laughs> and one other case that I'm familiar with, there may be more. There may be more, but another one that I'm familiar with is it's a sad case, but unfortunately it's happened to Jewish people over the years. Dying our Kiddush Hashem. So now the Lachd of Dying Kiddush Hashem is for the big three. Person always has to die. Private, public, doesn't matter. Or if it's time of decree against the Jewish nation, right? Where they prohibit you from doing mitzvahs, you have to die and not violate, right? And the third time is if it's Kiddush Hashem be Rabin. Kiddush Hashem be Rabin, public Kiddush Hashem. Meaning it's not the time of the decree and it's not one of the big three, idolatry, adultery, or murder. That has to be doing any of those. They just say, eat the piece of treif on the lave for the verbal. And what's Allah? And they're clearly doing it to disgrace Judaism. What's Allah? That's called Kiddush Hashem Be Rabbim. And the post can wonder if a woman would be considered what? The 10 or not? Oh, Rabbim means 10 people. Kiddush Hashem Be Rabbim. So Rabbi meets 10, and the post comes saying maybe woman would make up the 10. Yeah. My father passed away a few years ago. My aunt, his sister, was like maybe reform something, but she feels she's Jewish and, and is for Jewish causes. She insisted upon taking a shovel and shoveling over the grave, and no woman does that. Ooh, amongst us, you. but uh, Rabbi Adler, you know, we talked about Rabbi Adler in, in Muncie. He let her do it, and it was a little strange. Uh -huh. How do you feel about that? So they're, they're, by doing the, the shovel, you know, that the burial thing is a real din this way, that way. Usually, men that do it. it's not it's not a practice that's really halachic one way or another, as far as I know. A woman can or can't? Yeah, it's not real din. So, Hot and, uh, and yeah, yeah no real did one way or another, as far as yeah. I know. No, it did. So, anyways, these are three cases that I'm familiar with where the post can talk about the, this possibility of woman joining in and make up the minion. Like, wow. When I talk about post, I don't mean recent, modern, progressive post. -kin. I'm talking about from hundreds and hundreds of years ago. We've shown him. So, What's shot that in these three cases a woman may be able to make up the minion in Hanukkah? In Hanukkah in Shul for the minion of people, she might be able to count. For Chris Miguel, in order to say that beautiful Bracha Ravis Rivenu, Radanis Nakmasenu, Adamatinu. And finally, Kiddush Hashem, where a person has to die if someone's asking them to violate Torah Barabim. So you need 10, and women may count for that too. I don't understand. Why would, how would it happen that 10 people have to die? Okay. No, no. It, one person. There's a guy Dale, telling Danny Myers, eat this tray publicly in front of everyone, or else going to kill you. So if everyone means rob him, 10 people. Not going to kill them, really, right? So that one person. So I take a look around. I say, oh, there's only seven men. Lead to trafe. Not rob him. Yeah, but then uh, the woman say, hey, wait, 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 we learned that you mean <laughs> that uh, we make up the minion here. So, no, I wouldn't. What do you mean? Well, halacha Jews here. <laughs> you know, what? When the Pizchei Tshuva brings it down, he doesn't say father, he says, you know, Yesh Omer. He, he says Yesh Omer. Anyways, so what is the Pshat here? What's the Pshat? Minyan, Baruch, Kaddish, Kedusha, 
if any shuls, progressive shuls, are having women's minyan, and they're saying Kaddish, Kedush, Kriya Torah with the brach on the Kriya Torah, with Kaddish, Kedush, and it's just 10 women there, I, I am not familiar with any halachic sources that justify that. To me, if they would do that, it seems they're moving out of halachic Judaism. As far as I know, I'm not familiar with any sources. Over, that's because when you have 10 people, the need for 10 people for quorum over there, that's called Davar Sheba Kedusha. When you have Davar Sheba Kedusha, you need a halachic minion, and that means what? 10 men. Why? Good question, but that's the halach. As opposed to these three halachas that we just mentioned, it's not halacha of having a minion. So you did Davar Sheba Kedusha. It's a halacha of what? Hanukkah in shul is presuming Nisa de Rabin. Hanukkah is Rabin, you need. Uh, Megillus Estes presuming Nisa be Rabin. Then you get the special bracha. Or here we're talking about Kiddush Hashem be Rabin. We differentiate between a halachic minion, that, that's men, not women, for whatever reason, as opposed to what? Rabin. When there's a halacha of Rabin, and these are three examples that I'm familiar with. There may be more, but I just don't know. I'd have to check. But then, in these cases where you don't need minion, technically, you need Robin. So Robin can even be made up with whom? With woman. So the third case, hopefully, is just a theoretical one, right? <laughs> but the first two are real. First two are real. Most times in shul, they're not going to need a woman for the minion because hopefully they're going to have a Marav minion. But it's an interesting idea if it ever comes up. And then the second Krius Megillah, where you're going to have, you know, six, seven, eight men and a few women. It's not so far-fetched. And that brach at the end would be dependent on this halacha. One, two women, ten women. Halacha. By, uh, some say so. Some say, yeah, because it's not a halacha of minion of Davish Megdush. It's a separate topic of Robin that she may be able to count. Making up or joining. It's a whole discussion of post these cases. I thought it was just a fascinating case. Oh, so yeah, yeah, you'd have to find out, uh, you know, ask, you know, whether you have a minion of woman. I had more time, let me just read quickly. In Hilchos Megillah, okay, I'll read it quickly to you. Hilchos Megillah. Um, where Queen Esther publicly being married to the king? Wow, that's a great and question. They say she's married already. That's no. Excellent, excellent that's question. What was going on? Yeah, what was going on? How is Esther publicly with Ahasuerosh? How is she publicly with Ahasuerosh? Is that Robin? It's millions of people knew. Jews and non-Jews. And so now the question he's being up about, like, that's pretty bad, no? So there the Shaila is, how do you define Robin? They actually saw her in the bed with him, but they certainly knew that they were living together as man and wife. The post can discuss all that. And they say, well, it's a question of uh, if that's for Hesia. So, she said she was forced, but so then you can't be forced either. If you forced, you have to come. Yourself. Yeah. So there's a whole discussion being forced, being passive, and what was her role, actively involved, passively involved. It's a very, very good question. A nice, nice discussion. It very, it's a post for since I didn't discuss it. It's a great, great question. I'm uh, just going to see if I could find that Ramah on Megillah. What about a safer Torah? That needs to be a safe also, no? No, that 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 is from a halachic safer. So I just read over here. It says, no again Haravis Rivenu. We say Haravis Rivenu. Okay. And Yes, Kakel. Shosh ain love ain of Russian Rakel. The free rocky goes over what the bracha is that we say. Haravis Rivenu, the three brachas before and Shechianu at night and again in the daytime. And then it says we do Haravis Rivenu. Ah, the ain the brach on the Achra Elabit Seabor. You need to have it Seabor. Okay. So you need to have it Sibor. 
And let's see. So the Mishabura doesn't mention this idea of over here, but let's see if I can find it quickly. Those who mention that a woman can make up the Tzibor. There's only but Tzibor. Everyone has to hear the Bracha. And if one person reads and wants to bring another nine in at the end to get in the bracha, it doesn't help. It has to be Hakori Esen Megillah Avor Esen Oh, great. Found it. Just in time. Esen Hashim. Kasa B'Sef Mekrei Kodesh. Yitachin Shem Bracha Vavos Rivenu. Ki gam Esen Hashim. Nekot Sibor Le'in Yandesh. Shatayi B'Rusum Enisa. In the postkim, whether halacha lemaisa to rely on that shita or not. So, simple pshat. You know, I would be getting into a suffix brachos question, but the concept, at least, is a fascinating one, isn't it? About uh, the woman being robbed, even if not technically part of a halachic minion in other areas. Shabbos tovos, Hanukkah sameach, everyone. And uh, we'll pick up again uh, Tuesday. So I'll we'll join on uh, Thursday. Spend a little time with the family. Yeah, everyone should be well. And Mr. Shem, well, uh, if anyone has any, amen. Take care. Be well. Bye bye. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, Jackie. Hanukkah Sameach.